What's up design family and welcome to another episode of Fit Design TV. Welcome back to the channel if you're a returning viewer and welcome to the channel if this is your first episode of Fit Design TV. On today's episode, we have another measuring tutorial. On our last how to measure a sports bra video, you guys commented that you wanted us to see how we measure out men's t-shirts for design and fitting purposes. So the main types of measurements we're going to give you are the measurements that you should definitely be considering in order to create the perfect fit on your t-shirts. Obviously this also applies for women, however we will be specifically mentioning the measuring and the grading within the context of a male apparel piece. Today's episode, we'll be looking at men's performance tees. I'll be running you guys through the key measurements you should consider, and at the end of this, you should hopefully feel a lot more confident in terms of what measurements you need to be looking at to create the perfect fit for your garment. Hey guys, and welcome to Fit Design TV. So glad to have you here. On this channel, we discuss all things sports fashion, graphic design, manufacturing, and technology. We'll discuss key topics, answer pressing questions, and provide actionable steps on starting your own product line. If you're interested in any of the above topics, stick around. You're in for a good one. Like I mentioned, we're looking today at men's performance t-shirts. I'll be running you guys through the key measurements that you should be considering and I'll explain to you how you can take these measurements and what these measurements should mean to the end product. What do you need? You really need three things. You need your reference subject, whether that's a fit sample that you're looking at or the actual design that you're creating, so a prototype. You need a tailor tape, so I cannot recommend these enough. This is made out of fiberglass, so they're really, really cheap. They're sturdy, they last a long time. It has inches on one side and it has centimeters on the other side. And you need a flat surface, an open and large flat surface. Bear in mind, a lot of the measurements that we'll be taking, especially in the width department, will be considered half measurements. So when I mention a chest width, it's essentially a chest half width because as we know, our chest area goes all the way around. However, we'll be measuring half that chest width. And the reason we do it is we want to maintain consistency. It's super important to maintain consistency in your measurements so that when you're measuring between different prototypes and different designs that you're applying the same methodology. I do want to preface this by saying that this is not necessarily the only way to measure certain garments. However, this is the way that we do it here at Fit Design and it really does work for us so I figured I'd share that with you guys. I'm sure you've always wondered how to measure these garments and what measurements to take. So we have our tailor tape, we have our flat surface and you'll notice that we have two t-shirts. The reason we have two t-shirts is they're actually both different sleeve structures. The one on the left is a raglan sleeve and then the one on the right is a seven sleeve. The reason for this is actually the sleeve measurement differs according to the different sleeve types. So when we get to that, I'll explain to you where to take the sleeve measurement for each of these two variants. For now, we'll be focusing on the set in sleeve variant. And I'll split up these measurements into three categories. The first are the width measurements, the second are the length measurements, and then you have your miscellaneous measurements, like your cuff width, your neck width, your neck drop, so on and so forth. These are also composed of either length or width measurements. However, since they are a lot smaller and they're less general, we'll keep those to the end. We'll start off with our length measurements. In terms of the overall length, we have two main types of lengths that we can consider. The first is our CB length or our center back length, and the second is our HPS length or the highest point shoulder length. Depending on your specific workflow, you can use either or. For us, we use our CB measurement, which is the center back, and we maintain it consistently across all of our t-shirts. You can, however, choose to use your HPS, and I'll show you how to get both. First, we'll look at the HPS. So HPS, as I mentioned, is highest point shoulder. Where we're gonna measure from, and it's always very important to maintain straight lines in your measurement, and to make sure that your measuring tape is absolutely flat. Imagine your t-shirt is on a grid, right? You wanna make sure that your grid runs in two axes. 
axes, your x axes and your y axes. And then your grid has little grid lines. You want to make sure that your t-shirt is always parallel to that grid and perpendicular to that grid, right? Depending if it's the x or y. You don't want your t-shirt to be wonky and you're essentially measuring in angled ways, right? So you're trying to measure your HPS going straight up and down. However, you're not measuring it at a perpendicular. That will severely skew your measurements. So it's super important to make sure that your measurements are going straight up and down your grid. First, we'll start off with the HPS measurement. The HPS measurement, again, highest point shoulder, and we'll essentially start off at the top left corner of our collar seam. So the highest point on your shoulder and we'll go straight down to the very bottom of our bottom hem. So this is our hem, that's our bottom hem, making sure that it's perpendicular throughout. So here we can see that our HPS is 26.75, around 27. So you can allow for a bit of, let's just say uh, tolerance in your measurements. Typically it's around 0.5 inches. So that's how we measure our HPS. Next, we'll measure our center back. The reason why sometimes you may have to go with your HPS is if you have a really weird detail on the back of your neck where the rear neckline drop is just kind of extreme. So you have two neckline drops. You have your front neckline drop and then you have your back neckline drop. And those neckline drops, just as a side note, are typically measured perpendicularly from the grid line that goes off the top of your collar to the other top of your collar. So your rear neckline drop and then your front neckline drop. Here we're going to be measuring our center back which is essentially the measurement that we have from our rear neckline that all the way down perpendicularly to the bottom hem. So we'll take our measuring tape right under the stitch right so the, the stitch that secures and you want to maintain consistency so if you're typically someone who measures from the stitch measure from the stitch all the time if you're someone who measures from the top of the collar measure from the top of the collar i don't like to measure from the top of the collar just because collars can differ in width and thickness depending on the design so i like to take that out of the occasion and literally just measure from the stitch where i know that the main body garment fabric has begun and then I factor in the thickness of the collar if I need to later on. So we we'll grab our measuring tape, start off at the top, right at the stitch line, coming all the way down, and we have 25.75. So you can see that the HPS measurement difference and the CB measurement difference is around one inch, and that can stay consistent across your sizes. So that's our center back measurement. Next, we'll look at our width, our key width measurements. Our key width measurements, again, as I specified, are going to always be half measurements. This is literally going across the front half or the back half of the garment. It's not a circumference measurement and it's always measured with the garment not worn, laid flat on a table. The three main width measurements that we're going to have to take are the chest half width measurement, the waist half width measurement, and then the bottom hem half width measurement. For the chest half width measurement, we go from your chest area, armpit to armpit, all the way across, making sure the fabric is nicely stretched, but you're not applying tension to it. So you're letting the fabric relax the way that it naturally would. Do not apply tension to it. Don't try to get it to stretch out to its maximum. And at the same time, don't leave it all wrinkled. Make sure that you can get the garment feeling comfortable and naturally flat on the table. We'll go from left to right or right, right to left depending on the way that you see fit and that's our chest half width measurement. Next we'll look at our waist half width measurement. The waist is interesting. Typically the way that I like to take it is I will measure from the armpit so essentially the grid line that I took the chest half width to the bottom of the hem. Here I have 16.5 and I'll divide by 2 so 16.5 divided by 2 is 8.25. I'll measure that and I'll typically know my waist should be around here. So my waistline in this sense is exactly halfway between my chest half width and our bottom half width grid lines, right? We're still operating on grid lines and the reason I use the word grid lines is just you really have to just imagine these lines going across. So 
Here, I'll measure left to right as well, making sure that my tailor tape is completely flush with the left side and it's perpendicular to my left side, going straight across the garment, measuring, and here I have 19.25. And now, finally, we have our bottom half width measurement, which is pretty much the easiest. You just go from corner to corner at the bottom width, making sure, again, that your garment is nicely laid out and that you don't have any excessive pulling or excessive wrinkles that could distort the envelope or the shape of the garment. Here, we'll go side to side, and we also have similar measurements. So, this design is a straight box cut. You'll notice that the chest, the waist, and the bottom half width are all consistent. However, on something like this, where you have a tailored fit, where it kind of slopes in towards the center and flares out, you'll notice the chest is the widest, the waist is the smallest, and then the bottom width is the second. So it depends on the way to fit, and any manipulation of these measurements is going to give you a different style and different cut, which is why I want to teach you guys these measurements. Manipulating these measurements is going to give your garment a different cut. Something like a box cut looks very hip, very modern. Something like a tapered look is a lot more athletic, it's a lot more performancy, right? You can have an oversize where the chest is the smallest measurement and then your bottom width is the largest measurement and you have something that flares out and it essentially looks like an oversized tee. So there are a lot of different ways that you can fit your garment. We'll now look at some of our auxiliary measurements and I say auxiliary because you know these are some things like your sleeve measurement, your shoulder measurement, your shoulder to shoulder measurement, your front neckline drop, your back neckline drop, your neck half width, so on and so forth. So these are some key measurements that you'll want to consider and they'll all affect the shaping of your final garment. We'll start off with our sleeve measurement and this is where this bad boy here will come into play and I'll show you how to measure a sleeve measurement for both a set sleeve and then a raglan sleeve. And if you guys want to know what the actual difference is between a raglan sleeve and a set sleeve, we've done a video I highly recommend you check out. It's basically a tutorial on how to identify both types and what are the pros and cons of each in relation to each other. So we'll start off by measuring the sleeve length of our set and sleeve tee. We'll literally go from the seam that connects the shoulder or the main torso piece to the sleeve piece and we'll go, we'll run along the half envelope till we reach the cuff hem. And here we have seven inches making sure not to overstretch the garment and at the same time making sure that there are no excessive wrinkles. What's the difference? So here we measured our shoulder seam from essentially from our shoulder, from where our shoulder would sit down to where our arm pops out of the garment. On a raglan seam, you don't have this shoulder seam, right? As you can see, you have your torso piece and then you have your shoulder or your arm piece that kind of blends in to your shoulder. So it's a bit of a different construction. It has its benefits, it has its negatives. This is not the video to explain that. However, in terms of measuring out your shoulder seam or your sleeve length, in this case, we're going to go not from any shoulder seam. You won't go from here. You'll essentially go from where your collar ends on the right side of the, or the left side of the collar, depending on the sleeve you're measuring. Measure from the stitch line all the way across, maintaining your tape parallel to the edge of the garment. And here we have 12.5 inches. So you can see here where we had around seven inches, the reason it's a lot smaller is because we're not counting for the actual shoulder length that we have. Here, you kind of have like the sleeve length and the shoulder length baked in together. That's the difference and I did want to mention that just because I know that the raglan sleeve is a very, very popular cut, especially in the sportswear space. Let's go back to our set sleeve, good old faithful set sleeve. The other measurements that we we'll want to consider, especially from a like shoulder proportion, is shoulder to shoulder. The reason why we want to mention shoulder to shoulder is it gives the breadth of the shoulders. Having a wider shoulder will create a wider stance 
to your t-shirt and having a lower shoulder to shoulder measurement will create more of like a let's just say a narrow look this garment itself has a wide shoulder to shoulder measurement which gives my body or like the shoulders a bit more structure it looks more a bit like a military kind of look to it a bit more of a european look versus something that's more set in that may look a bit less kind of structured in its approach so that's why it's important sometimes to provide that shoulder to shoulder seam here we'll go from your top left corner to your top right corner maintaining a nice comfortable relaxation in the fabric and here we have 18.5 so we'll literally go to this from the seam from the top left corner of the seam where the sleeve pattern connects to the main torso pattern and to the right sleeve pattern connects to the main torso pattern so those seams connect in a straight and perpendicular line and now we'll also want to measure the individual shoulder length so the shoulder length is also measured from the outside of the collar so we're never measuring including the collar width i always eliminate the collar width here the collar width is a variable that we can't necessarily control and it depends on a lot of factors so i eliminate it from my measurements and i stay consistent you see i did not measure my center back length with the actual collar piece height so I won't measure my shoulder length with the collar piece height because that will skew my measurements, especially when we're getting to smaller measurements, making sure that you're maintaining consistency in your methodology is key so as to not skew your results. Believe me, 0.5 inches can make all the difference when it comes to garment design, especially when it comes to a lot of these smaller measurements that are going to have a lot more impact on the final product. So here, here we'll go from the seam that connects the collar piece to the main torso and we'll go all the way down maintaining a parallel tape line to the edge of our seam to the edge of our garment and we'll go to the seam line here we have around 5.5 and that's our shoulder length the next measurements that i'll definitely want you guys to consider and this is a bit more of a Fitment, so it, it has to do with really how the garment is going to fit, is the perpendicular armhole length. This one can be a bit tough to get your hat, head around, but it's super important. Having the right perpendicular armhole length will ensure, right, you can have a wide chest. However, if you don't have a matching perpendicular armhole length, you're going to get your fabric riding up against your armpits. It's going to chafe, and it's going to be super uncomfortable. And at the same time, if you have too large of a perpendicular armhole length, you're gonna get way too much fabric over here and it's going to bunch up and it's going to look super weird. So you have to get the right mix of perpendicular armhole length and chest width. This is what I wanted to mention before is that these measurements, they really push and pull each other. So having them work in a way that they complement each other is going to create a perfect fit in your end result. Maintain consistency across your measurements, but also maintain consistency across how you're creating your measurements. So if you have a wide chest, you don't necessarily want a super tight perpendicular armhole length. It's going to look weird. It's going to fit awkwardly. How do you maintain, how do you measure your perpendicular armhole length? On a set in sleeve, we're literally going to go straight up and down, imagining that we have grid lines. So I mentioned the idea of grid lines before. Create a grid line from your armpit to armpit and create a grid line from your shoulder seam to your shoulder seam and literally just measure straight up and down. Don't measure from the arm or like the shoulder seam to your armpit because that's not perpendicular, that's slanted, that's like your hypotenuse. We want to measure straight up and down and essentially extend, visually extend our line across to the armpit. So here we have around 7.5, 7.75, almost to 8 and that's our perpendicular armhole length. I also like to mention that on a raglan sleeve, it's different, right? Because we don't have our shoulder seam. Where we do measure our perpendicular armhole seam is from the seam of our collar to our main body, perpendicularly down to the grid line that creates our chest grid line. And here it is around 11, 10.75 if we go straight across. If you guys are having trouble visually looking for those grid lines, what you can do, especially when starting off, to be as accurate as possible, is create a right angle with your tape and essentially use that to make sure that your measurement is correct, right? So this is a good way to 
ensure that you're hitting your grid lines correctly. Here we're looking at around 11.5 again, and that's our perpendicular armhole length. So there are a bit of measurement differences depending on the garment. However, really you see most of the measurements translate between both. Next, we'll look at our rear neckline drops and our front neckline drops. Neckline drops are super important. Pay close attention to both and how they relate to each other. If you have too high of a neck of a front neckline drop, you're going to choke up against your neck, and it's going to be very uncomfortable. If you have too low of a front neckline drop, so it's too much, there's the value of that measurement is too much. You're going to get too much skin showing, and that may not necessarily be what you want. However, in some situations, let's just say you have a scoop neck. You have a larger front neckline drop. If you have a V-neck, you have a, a larger front neckline drop. So depending on the specific construction, details of your garment, you're gonna have different measurements. However, for a standard performance tee, we want something that's not too crazy and at the same time doesn't choke up too much. Our front neckline drop will measure from our back neckline drop. Again, from the stitch down to the stitch of our front neckline drop. Here it's around 2.25. And for our back neckline drop, we'll measure it from the, essentially the grid line that's created from your shoulder, from your collar seam to collar scheme, seam, down to the bottom of the stitch of your back neckline. Here it's around 1.25. So you'll notice that our back neckline drop is around 1.25 and our front neckline drop from our back neckline drop is 2.25. It can get a bit confusing. I highly recommend you practice and hopefully by the end, you'll be a bit more comfortable. The last is our cuff width measurement. So in order to create enough space to allow your garment to, or your body to come through the sleeve, you don't want it to be too tight. And at the same time, you don't want it to be too loose. If your garment is meant to be more fitted, you can create something a bit tighter. If you want your garment to be more of a lifestyle, sort of like street look, you can have it a bit looser. In terms of that measurement, it's very simple. We'll essentially go from on our bottom hemline or our, our hemline for our cuff and we'll go straight across maintaining a parallel look across. Here it's 6.5 so we'll go from corner to corner and we'll measure and essentially we have 6.5 inches and that's our cuff half width. The reason I say cuff half width again because it's flat on the ground and we're only technically taking half of the width. There's a lot of information here guys and I will highly recommend you watch this video a couple times. If you enjoyed this video, if you found it useful, please, please, please consider smashing a thumbs up, commenting below on what you'd like to see next. If you want to see more tutorials, certain videos on how to measure. If you guys are not subscribed, please do consider subscribing. We put out a ton of great content, around two to three videos a week. And if you guys are subscribed, thank you so much for tuning in to another episode of Fit Design TV. Until the next episode, stay awesome.